Good morning, grade 11s. As you can see, I have a partner in my math journey today. This is Minu. So we'll be doing pages 111 and 112 today. And I can't remember if you have a quiz today that is coming up or if you just have one that was due last night. But whatever it is, make sure you do some of it. Okay? Oh, bye, Minu. So, let's get down to business, shall we? So here we are, on page 111. And there's our business. Right here. So, we remember that this form, that's a bad highlighter for that color, this form will give us the roots, or as we know them, the x-intercepts. How do we get to this form? We factor. Which means it only works if the quadratic is factorable. Remember, we can also complete the square to graph something. And we can also do uh, vx equals negative b over 2a, and then sub that back in. And we can also do the quadratic formula. So some of you might be saying, why do we learn all these other ways if the quadratic formula works every single time? Well, the quadratic formula, as you well know, can be a little picky. If you do one thing wrong with it, you get the wrong answer. So sometimes it's wise to avoid it. So we look at this one, and it's pretty simple. I mean, that's exactly what we've been looking at since the 10th grade. That is something we can factor, because we need numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to 3. And of course, it's 5 minus 2. So x plus 5, x minus 2 equals 0. Well, I lie. It equals y. But, of course, our roots, or x-intercepts, are x comma 0. That's a y value. So, if I make that 0, of course, then I have x plus 5 and x minus 2, which means x has to be negative 5 and positive 2. So I come over my graph, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now I know my roots. Since a is positive, I know it's that kind of parabola, so all I need here is the vertex. And, of course, the vertex is the axis of symmetry. And I know I get that by doing P plus Q divided by 2. Negative 5 plus 2 divided by 2 equals negative 3 over 2. So, that's negative one and a half. So I know it's going to be right here. And then all I have to do is use that to find my y value. Now, I could put it in back here, but then I would be squaring a fraction. And that's an extra step. I also could put it right in here, which makes it really easy. Because we know 5 is 10 over 2. And we know 2 is negative 4 over 2. And we know the x is negative 3 over 2 plus negative 3 over 2 plus. So negative 3 over 2 plus 10 over 2 is 7 over 2. I'm out of room because I put all these extra notes in here. 
sorry guys, um, I'm going to erase these extra notes right here and just work this way. Negative 3 over 2 plus 10 over 2 is negative 7 over 2. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7 over 2. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49 over 4. Sorry, positive 7 over 2 is a negative 49 over 4. So I know my y value is way down here at negative 49 over 4. And there's my graph. Now to do this properly, you want to label the points you've got. Uh, 2, 0, negative 5, 0, and negative 3 over 2, and negative 49 over 4. Let's come to this one. Now again, we could do um, quadratic formula, complete square, all that stuff, excuse me, but we're going to factor it. But I've got an a value now, so i got to remember, i got to multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1. And of course it's 2 minus 3. Again, you're going to factor this any way you want. I am going to say that is 2, sorry, that is x plus 2 over 2 and x minus 3 over 2 x plus 1 and 2x minus 3 equals y. Of course I change that to 0. So x has to equal negative 1 or positive 3 halves. Now, of course you remember we get that positive 3 halves right there because 2x minus 3 has to equal 0, so 2x has to equal 3, so x has to equal 3 halves. So I come over to my graph, negative 1, positive 3 halves, which is 1 and a half right there. 3 halves, and then I just do my math. Vertex x which is the axis of symmetry too lazy to write symmetry is negative 1 plus 3 halves divided by 2 which is of course negative 1 plus 3 halves is positive 1 half positive 1 half divided by 2 is 1 quarter right so our vx is one quarter so then I go over to here and I put that in for the x's one quarter plus one times two times one quarter minus three equals vertex y that's one and one quarter so 1 plus 1 is 5 quarters times 2 quarters minus 3, which is a half minus 3, which is 1 half minus 6 halves, which is negative 5 halves, which gets me negative 25 eighths. And I just put that in at 1 quarter. 1 quarter, negative 25 eighths, and then I graph. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a sec. My coffee is ready. Give me a moment. Okay, we're back. Um, where was I? Uh, right here. This uh, should be 5 fourths. So that should be 25 sixteenths.
Sorry about that, everyone. All right, so let's come to here. Factor it. Y equals, I got to multiply to negative 8, add to negative 7, so it's 1 minus 8, x plus 1, x minus 8, so x equals negative 1, positive 8, which means our vertex x equals negative 1 plus 8 over 2, which is 7, negative 7, sorry, positive 7 halves. Which means our vertex y equals 7 halves plus 1, which is 2 halves, and 7 halves minus 8, which is 16 halves, which gets me 9 over 2 times negative 9 over 2. Now you should notice a pattern here. 5 fourths, negative 5 fourths. Uh, 7 halves, negative 7 halves. 9 halves, negative 2 halves. Negative 81 fourths. So of course then I just graph it. Uh, I had negative 1. positive 8, right, um, axis of symmetry, 7 halves, negative 81 fourths, there we go, Oop, I pushed that a little too far to the right, fortunately I can do that. And we come to here, x, sorry, I had to multiply to 15 and add to negative 8. So, of course, it's negative 3 and negative 5. I'll change colors. x minus 3, x minus 5. So... Um, my vertex x is negative 3 plus negative 5, sorry, I lie, I missed a step, x equals 3 and 5, so my vertex x is 3 plus 5 divided by 2, which equals 4, and then the 4 goes up there. My vertex y equals 4 minus 3, 4 minus 5, which of course, negative 1, sorry, positive 1, negative 1, which is negative 1. So then I graph it. 3, 5, 4, negative 1. Or negative one, and then I graph. Now, of course, we remember all of these graphs. We could also put in the y-intercept if we wanted, right? Like this would be negative eight. Um, this graph would carry on up and hit fifteen. Same with the other two. And we're going to do these last two. You'll notice we've got a negative one there. And then we're going to stop. Um, multiply to six, negative 16. Add to 6. It's 8 minus 2. X plus 8. X minus 2 equals Y. So my roots. Negative 8 positive 2, my vertex x, negative 8 plus 2 over 2, which is negative 3, my vertex y equals negative 3 plus 8, negative 3 minus 2, negative 5 times 5, 
negative 25, and then I graph it. Negative 8, positive 2, negative 3, negative 25, and a y-intercept of negative 16. And lastly, multiply now. This one's tricky. Take that negative out at the beginning. Negative x squared plus 4x minus 21. Now factor this. Multiply to negative 21, add to 4, 7 minus 3. Negative x plus 7, x minus 3. So our roots are still negative 7 and positive 3. So our vertex x is still negative 7 plus 3 over 2, which is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. Now here's where it gets weird. The a is negative. So when I sub this in my vertex y, stop fouling. My cats do not get along. Uh, sorry, negative, negative 2 plus 7, negative 2 minus 3, which is negative uh, 5, negative 5, which is, of course, negative, negative 25, which is, of course, 25. So now I know that here I am at uh, negative 7, 3, negative 2, positive 25. And my y-intercept, of course, is 21. And it has to go like that. And that's where we're going to stop today, because these exam-style questions are a little freaky, and I'd like to uh, show you how to do them. Okay, so we don't have any work today, because I don't think there's a quiz that's due. And you can stop right here. If you really want to try it, you can try number four, um, but you cannot do number five because you don't know what that means. And I'm going to show that to you on Wednesday. Okay? So I hope everyone had a good weekend. It was beautiful and sunny, and we were actually allowed to do a few more things than we've been allowed to do in the last couple of weeks. So I hope everybody got out and tried to do something. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday. Stay healthy, stay strong, stay together. Talk to you soon, I hope.